Martin Daly. And finding space maybe for Italian cross. It's a good one. Well saved and turned in by Keane. His lock made the initial block, but Robbie Keane there with a trademark somersault. season Ferdinand and Backer both forward it's a deep one and a good header and it's turned in by Backer on the line Ferdinand initially heading on the free kick Backer just making absolutely sure that Leeds United have doubled their advantage and Rio Ferdinand has helped them on course for a place in the Champions League next season. Just needed a touch perhaps from Backer on the line. But as with the first half, West Ham have been stung early on. I think the goal will probably go down to Rio Ferdinand. Just his Disappointment. Up steps Sheringham this time. Oh, and Nash got to it but couldn't keep it out. And the footballer of the year has tilted the Manchester Derby United's way from the penalty spot. High confidence Sheringham, he must be. Sneak down. He's now he's uh, exceptional in the air. He's making his move from just the deeper than the penalty spot. Yeah. It's in! Steve, Steve Howey! Might have been David Beckham even at the front post. He's next it on, but they get players coming in at the back. And that's the important part of this. way it's hard to remember a more popular player in recent times than Patrick Vieira so the Arsenal hordes must have choked on their cornflakes when they read in the Saturday papers their gladiators being hunted by Inter Milan no one took Champions League KO more personally than Patrick who also this week said it was a mistake selling Overmars and Petit Arsenal fans only pray he doesn't follow them out of North London the greatest player in England. What do you think? You think that? No doubt about it. I just hope he doesn't go, I really do. Is there a best player, best box to box player in the world, I think? Bring him there. If he goes, I think, I, I, I think that could be the end. I think we will we'll probably be finished about fifth, sixth. <laughs> He's our key player. A glowing endorsement too from the man who's determined to keep him in the Premiership next season and not in Serie A. In the second half, he was outstanding and uh, of course, he can dictate the pace of the game. You see that on the third goal. And, uh, of course, it's important to keep him. But while Wenger hopes Vieira doesn't quit Arsenal, Walter Smith is left sweating on whether Alex Niarko will quit the game for good. That's what the Ghanaian told reporters he would do when he left Highbury in an emotional whirlwind. 
He asked to be substituted after an Everton fan came on the pitch and threw his shirt at him in protest at his performance. From a dugout, we weren't too clear about him. I mean, obviously, he expressed his displeasure to my Arco, who uh, obviously then um, has taken offence at that. So, uh, you know, he wanted to come off. So I would have thought with the way we were playing at that time, it may have been, <laughs> it may have been easier for him to come off anyway. In truth, Niarco was no worse than his teammates. And in the first half, he and they didn't do badly at all, despite falling behind to Freddie Youngberg's goal. While some teams concede at Highbury and falter, Everton fought, producing a flowing move to equalise. Thomas Gravison's crafty lofted through ball and former gunner Kevin Campbell firing home with glee at the second attempt. But the problems began for Smith after half-time. No one picked up Gilles Grimondi in a corner and the Frenchman had his first goal of the season. Vieira crafted the third typically, running from back to front to set up countryman Sylvain Viltord. His finish was brilliant. It's on days like this it all seems worthwhile for Wenger. A satisfying end to a trying week. At some, st at some stage, uh, everybody's negative around the club and the team. And that's where we inside the club have to be positive because I believe in... Uh, in my players, in the value of my players. Not too many positive vibes floating around Goodison, though, after this second half showing, made none the easier by Abel Xavier sending off for collecting two yellows ten minutes from time. Thierry Henry rubs salt into the wound, dancing round Paul Gerrard at the death to claim his 22nd goal of the season. A 4-1 result which leaves Everton still with plenty to do in the scrap to avoid the drop. Well, we still need to win. We still need to win at least. Um, so we've been saying that for a few weeks and we've lost three games in a row now. So uh, that's been our position for a few weeks. But as I say, with two home games um, still to come, we would hope to pick up the points in, uh, in those games. If only Smith had a Vieira. Arsenal know only too well how lucky they are. All right, the English Premier League is winding. Back after eight months out with a knee injury. From here. Ben and Phillips ahead of him, Carter on providing the option. And that was a great ball. It's gone in. The unlikeliest goal scorer has broken the deadlock. Patrice Carteron, the Frenchman, brings delight to Weir side. Well, what a magnificent pass. Hutchison played in the goal. Well, I talked about the fullbacks getting forward on the course run and great. But just look at Cartron's position there. He's right next to Carl Court. As Tom gets this ball, now just look at him. He gets on his bike. He knows he's got to get past Don Hutchinson. It's then a two against one situation. And Hutchinson's pointing exactly where he wants the Frenchman to go. And well, would you believe it? Che Given looked absolutely in top form here this afternoon. And it needed something special to beat him. And the Frenchman slots it through the Irishman's legs. But what a delightful ball by Don Hutchison. It had exactly the right pace on it. First touch. Decent ball in as well. And caught on the far post. Scrambled in. It's been coming, hasn't it? It really has been coming. Fair play to Newcastle. They responded in a very positive fashion when they conceded this goal. Sutherland really just do not deal with the cross in there. I think the ball actually goes past now, Quinn. It finds its way to the far post. Court gets the sort of touch he's looking for and gets it back into the danger area. Well, Andy O'Brien, we talked about the threat of Carter on as a defender, and now we're talking about O'Brien also as a We're missing the last three with a... For a corner. Paul Ince's never-say-die attitude, winning a corner for Middlesbrough. Simon Royce came out, but hadn't gathered the ball cleanly. Nitz was perfectly at liberty to do that. As Middlesbrough score from the resulting corner to take the lead. Hamilton Ricard with the simplest of headers from the cross. The ball Middlesbrough had gone up inside the opening ten minutes. A simple ball flighted in from Gordon and a simple header. is there before Akinbae. Boxic evades Taggart who's out of position and struggling to get back. Another real decent chance for Middlesbrough.
of Ricard making the run ahead of Boxic, who might not need him. Oh, what a sublime goal! Alan Boxic shows the undoubted world class he possesses with a second goal of stunning quality. A solo effort in the extreme. He dispossessed Cherry Taggart and ran half the length of the pitch before the most measured of chips to beat Simon Royce. Ricard, the only player that was in support, used him as the decoy, turned inside, stole a yard past Rowan, and the finish left Simon Royce powerless. Alan Boxic's 12th goal of the season, and it's given Borough a 2-0 lead and a significant step towards Premiership safety. Now Ricard, and still Ricard, and they're through again. Should have been 3-0. Only Frank Sinclair stopped it being 3-0. Gordon with the corner. It's not closed down before he gets to it. And it's three. Middles for a score again. Two goals in two minutes. And Paul Lynch gives Borough a third. Sparking seeds of euphoria and jubilation in the Middlesbrough fans. Again, the Leicester players just backed off. It's had a free run of the ball. It was the power on the shot that got it past Simon Royce. For the second consecutive Saturday, they're 3-0 up away from home. Palmer has hit the jackpot. He's got the best seat in the house. Rob? You can see from that shot. A developing team and a, a developing stadium as well. By the time they've finished, it will be fit for European football. Right. Great skill to nip it away. Oh, and try to beat Stewart. There it is. There's the goal. Martin Reiser gives it switch down the lead. The tractor boys plow on. Coventry couldn't withstand what has been constant pressure. Holland went flying in. Royce on the blind side. Ipswich Town has a deserved lead. Carson. It's been a feisty game of football without a yellow card so far. I don't know how long that's going to remain. Right hits it, deflected, a cruel blow for Coventry, who are getting that sinking feeling. The powerful shot came off the elbow of Breen and took it out of the sight of Kirkland. Blue straight back at him. McCall. Yes, he'll screw it back, and it's 1-0. Ashley Ward scores just his second premiership goal for Bradford City. There's been a relaxed mood about Bradford this afternoon. Their fate has been sealed many weeks ago, really. And this was a nicely crafted goal. Yes! Bradford have sealed just their fourth home win of the season. Minutes from time, Jesse shot. And it came off board. So short of premiership goals is he. I'm sure he'll claim it, but he knew very little about it. And Bradford won't be relegated this afternoon.